Like a wheel within a wheel, never ending or beginning. Like the circles that you find in the windmills of your mind. Visit. StogieGeeks.com forward slash debonair for a list of retailers who carry debonair cigars. Buy some today and get a little more debonair. Back. Every- ah, my mic is live. Welcome back, everyone, to the Stogie Geek Show. This is our debonair ideal segment for this evening. Of course, I'm Paul Sidorian. Will Cooper's on the lines via Skype from North Carolina. Welcome, yeah. Will. Yeah, hey, we should just mention a few things. Uh, tomorrow, <clears throat> um, Mr. Phil Zangi is going to be at Twin Smoke Shop uh, kicking off the uh, official launch of Indian Motorcycle Cigars at Kirk Kendall's place. So if you're up in Londonderry, New Hampshire, you definitely want to get there. And then September 19th, right here in Rhode Island... Yep. They are doing the Rhode Island launch, and it's actually at Club Jokes, which, I mean, you could literally throw a rock from my house and hit where he's having this event. Like, it's literally in, like, practically in my backyard, Will. Wow. It's even closer to my house than the studio. The studio's only 10 minutes from my house. This place is, like, a third of the way from my house to the studio. Like, it's, like, literally, like, right there. Wow. And then in between that, Phil's actually going to be going down to Barrister Cigars in, um... New Jersey on September 10th, and from what I've heard, they're going to have bikes there, mm. um, and they're going to also it's going to be uh, opening night of the NFL um, on. Nice. Some, actually, that's competing with Stogie Geeks. I don't know if we talked to Phil <laughs> about. It. Yeah. We may we may have to do a football or something next week. I Devin know I, football yeah. season starting well, and it's going to cut into people watching the show. No, it won't because they're gonna they're, they're gonna watch the show. Rather, they're than gonna watch. I I know I know. Crook will watch the show. <laughs> uh, you know, football season is upon us, but yep, no, it's so, all good. In, I'm in, happy for football season, and I I hope that um well I hope that the Thursday night games suck and everyone watches the Stogie Geek show instead. <laughs> yeah, and then folks, just don't forget. You know, you know, we just had a segment with the Acme cigars. They donated ten sampler packs. All you got to do is follow them on Instagram and send us the screenshot, and we're going to pick 10 at winner. So there's plenty of cigars you're going to get tonight. That's awesome. Um, so we're talking about classic cigars, Will. Yeah, you know, <clears throat> I came up – I came, you know, we've been doing our Stogie Geek shorts, um, which, folks, check it out on our, on our YouTube channel and on our uh, new StogieGeeks.com website, and they're 10-minute – uh, really singular topic type of things, whether we usually focus on a brand, a cigar. Um, you know, we Paul, we've done a few of these. We've done Fuente, Padron. Mm-hmm. We just did Davidoff uh, earlier. So, you know, I started thinking, I said, you know, we, what is a classic cigar? <clears throat> I mean, they're, they're, we hear a cigar is a classic, but what makes that cigar a classic, Paul? I, I was going to ask you the same question, Will. <laughs> When it, well, I'll give you my take on it. When yeah, there's I, no right yeah, or wrong answer. I'll give you mine yeah. as well. Go ahead. When I think of a classic cigar, I think of one that has been around for a long time. So I think time plays a factor. I've seen this cigar on the shelves in retailers for a long time. You know, maybe I remember smoking it years ago, and then I come back and I smoke it again, and maybe it's still something I smoke today. Um, time is definitely one. Uh, one that stays consistent over time, I think, is another factor as well. Um, you know, also one that I think I think of classic cigars. A lot of them coming from larger manufacturers because I think they can keep that cigar on the market for a long time and keep the consistency for a long time. So when I think consistency, you know, and when I think classic, I think uh, Arturo Fuente, I think Davidoff, uh, I think Oliva, Padron. Companies that have been larger companies that have been in business for a long time that make really outstanding smokes that I know that I can go back to and I'm going to have that same experience every single time that always produce and 
you know, I can go smoke a ton of boutique cigars and, you know, a lot of them are great as well. But sometimes I like to come back to the classics. So I think of an Arturo Fuente, Don Carlos, um, you know, Torpedo cigar. You know, I think of a Padron 1964 uh, Anniversary Pyramid is a classic cigar for me. Um, with Davidoff, you know, the Grand Crew has been around for a long time. That's a good classic cigar. Uh, for me, the Millennium Blend Robusto is also in the Davidoff line. Those are kind of how I define some of those more classic uh, cigars, Will. Yeah, you know, there was another inspiration I had for this segment, too. Um, I had a conversation with Fred Rui of Nomad Cigar in Chattanooga. And in that conversation, he made a really interesting point how the market's changing. He said that, you know, consumers are becoming brand loyal, but not necessarily blend loyal. Yes. So... I think when you look at the blend, the blend, if someone is blend loyal and they go back to that cigar, and it has to be out for a while. So I, I think you, you can't say a cigar came out last year or this year and it's, and it's an instant. Cl- I just don't think you could do that. Mm-mm. So, you know, a lot of the cigars <clears throat> you just mentioned, I think, are, are in that category. You know, for me, the Padron 1926 number nine. Um, yep. I that, that 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 that, that mm-hmm. is that is definitely one that um I, I would put in there and I, you know I think you know this one be you know if you want to look at something I think it's ready now to be a classic I think Liga Pravada T52 in my book has hit that point now it's been out six years yep um they come out pretty frequently I don't want to say they're they're always available but neither are some of those Fuentes that you just mentioned mm-hmm. you know they are limited production but they're recurring limited production i think that one's kind of kind of hit it as well so that kind of led to you know another question would you put like a limited cigar in that i had a one and done no see i to me I, for yeah. me anyway when i define a classic cigar it's something that's always available you know i think another good example is ashton e uh vsg you know that line's been around for a while the, i think the, they have to age well uh, as well and I think we really see the aging potential in a lot of these classic cigars because they've been on the market so long. Um, ESG is just, uh, VSG rather, is just one of those uh, blends for me. You know, I tried it in the Robusto not too long ago. I mean, it smokes so consistently. It ages well. It's been around for a long time. I know I can find it at a lot of different retailers and uh, in different shops. So <clears throat> to me, that's classic. No, I, I definitely agree. You know, I, the one, there was one cigar I was kind of thinking of, and it was out four years ago. So I think it was, but we always go back and we talk about E.P. Carrillo's Dark Rituals. Yep. And But you just, unfortunately, in, in a way, it's an iconic, it's become an iconic cigar. But you just, I can't say it's a classic just because, you know, it, it was pretty much a one and done. Yeah. On that, you yeah, know. It's a limited. it's a limited run. Yeah, I mean, so... It, it's kind of interesting, you know, I thought maybe when the original La Polina Family Series came out, that was going to be a classic. It didn't work out like that because, mm-hmm. to be honest with you, the, the, the stuff that started coming out of that factory went downhill, and they ended up having to move the blend, the, move it to Miami, uh, the Family Series, and they had to reblend it. So I can't put that as a, a classic in my book. It didn't work think, out like that. Well, do you think that the Avo Classic is a classic cigar? I think it, I think it is. Um, and it carries and, the name, which is interesting. Yeah. Now it is not a maybe it's not a classic among the cigar geeks, mm. but there's a lot of people who aren't cigar geeks that enjoy a cigar, and that cigar has been around a long time. So I, yeah, they I, just I, repackaged. I, sm- I still love smoking those cigars to this day. I mean, as much as it, it's <clears throat> it's kind of like palate cleansing for me. Great morning smoke. Yeah, I mean it's you know, and I go back, you know, Camacho, you know the uh, the triple Maduro. Yeah. Um, they kept the blend the same. Um, they did change the packaging. You know, some that's been a, a very pop. And you mentioned another one, Oliva Siri V. Yes, that's a classic. I, yeah, I think that's classic. Um, again, it doesn't get the glitz that you know you you know used to. But you know, Monte Cristo White label. Not you know again, not a cigar geek cigar. But you mm-hmm. know what? Ask any retail retailers are going to keep that cigar on the shelf. They, oh, they yeah. want to keep they want to keep that cigar on the shelf, so I would definitely put it in there. I'm mean, a lot of people enjoy it. Yep, I would agree. I, I almost want to put some of the Partagas, you know, one sixty, one fifty in there. 
Um, but they are limited. So yeah, you don't know when they're gonna. Come out. Now, maybe in the last three or four years, <clears> have you seen a, <throat> a regular production cigar come out that you think may hit that classic mark in the next few years? I think that the uh, cigar that we've talked a lot about is that AJ Fernandez New World um, Connecticut Corona. Corona Gordon. That's really new, and and I'll tell you, yes. That that I think that thing has some serious legs on it, man. To be a classic cigar. Yep. I'm addicted no. to those things. Yep. I mean, I was looking. I think Davidoff Nicaragua is. It's two years old now. It's yeah, it kind has of potential. It has potential. I think there could be more line extensions. Mm-hmm. I, I'm not ready to say that about Escurio yet. Um, no, I've only smoked like one, one or two, uh, one of each size actually of the Escurio. Right. So you know, I'm definitely you know not ready as far as that. You know, hey, you know, I know it's Phil's segment, but you know, debonair. Is. Oh yeah, I I totally agree. And, and so and it's it, interesting. Some of those debonairs, if you look on the back of the band to that, uh, when it was box date, uh, some of those date back to 2012. So, yeah. So I, you know, and and those are smoking awesome now, and I I really love the natural wrapper in that uh, in that cigar, and you know that's definitely one that I I keep a good supply of in my humidor, well as best I can because I tend to just smoke them, <laughs> so. Yeah, and you know, a lot of people are discovering, you know, we, we've we been on Debonair for about two years now since we've really been introduced. So we've been smoking them a long time. You know, a lot of people now getting introduced to them. Um, and I'll just tell you guys, you guys probably, the Salamones, most of them are gone. And, and, and in my opinion, the Salamones are, you know, you know, they're great cigars, you know. Awesome and then you just, you just made me think of Paul Gamarian's, too. I mean, there's a lot. That's that another not, good classic cigar. Uh, under, yeah. under the radar classic, but... Mm-hmm. R- really good cigar. Well, that Reserva Exclusiva that we talked about on a previous segment was just... Oh, yeah. That cigar is awesome. Yep, the Symphony. Yep, I mean, yep, that's a... Symphony that's, line. That Symphony Salomon. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, um, you know, how about anything from maybe Tatawahe? Ah, I was just going to say Tatawahe, and it was interesting. I, I had posted on uh, Facebook, and I was smoking an RC-184, and to me, that that is a classic cigar. It it wasn't in production for a long time, and Pete kind of brought it back. Um, so I would put it on the cusp of that classic. And the only reason it's on the cusp is because it's not always available. Um, I don't see, you know, if a retailer carries Tatawahe, you may may or may not see that uh, RC 184. The 233 is really big, but the the 184, I think that's that is just an awesome, awesome cigar. Uh, I think that, uh, you know, Pete's uh, Miami label or the brown label, you know, that's certainly a classic cigar as well. Yep. And then I think with Illusione, um, probably the one I would think of, and it, I'll, it wasn't always my favorite, although I've come more around to it, uh, is the Epernay. Yeah. Yeah, I, I kind of finally understood what that cigar, it took me a while to understand what that cigar was all about. I was not a big fan of it at first, but I think after smoking some of the ECCJs, I came back to that cigar, and I think of, of that you know, there's a lot of long. I think that would just be a popular cigar for a long time to come. Yep, I agree. Yep. <clears throat> cool. Well, I think that uh, rounds it out uh, right. for the Debonair Ideal segment. Uh, again, <clears throat> for me, the big Debonair event uh, that's happening will be September 19th because it's right in my backyard, uh, and I'm uh, uh, very now- anxious to smoke the new Indian motorcycle. Tibet. What is the full name? Ultra Premium, right? Ultra. Pre- yep. And we have we've not. I've not smoked them yet either. I have not either. Yep. And are you now? Is there there's been rumors going around that you might be in smoking jacket with that. Is that I, true? I am gonna adorn. Well, you know the weather's gonna be a little cooler. It might depend on the weather, but I might I may put on my fancy jacket and my fancy hat for that event. That's what I'm that, thinking. Yep. Yeah, and I think Mr. Stogie Sano might might make an. Well, I'm sure he'll make an appearance. He, he will. Yeah, he would definitely be in and, attendance and, and, so, and probably so listen, be making fun of my fancy jacket and my fancy hat. He will. So you but don't want to miss that. No, you don't want to miss that. But more importantly, um, just watch him with his cigar. You know that he doesn't lose it. I. You know, <laughs> he needs he needs low jack for all of his <laughs> things. Every time he comes to the show. He leaves something behind, and I, I, I don't know if he's, like, marking his territory. It's either his phone, his keys, his lighter, his cutter, 
any cigars that he had with him or were given to him while he was here. And then the most recent episode that he was on, he lost the cigar that he was currently smoking. Yeah. Uh, uh, and there's only yeah. so many places it can go in the studio, and he was sitting on it. He was sitting on it, yeah. He was sitting on it. Yeah. 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 You know, I remember last year when we did the third anniversary show, um, Stogie Sam was kind of helping us line fill up for that segment. And he came, to, he was working Joyles, and he came to the studio, and he gets to the studio, and he left his phone back at the shop. Yeah. And he left, and, he left Phil back at the shop, too. He had to go back and get Phil. I don't know how you forget an entire person, but he forgot Phil. <laughs> 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 it's always always entertaining. It's always entertaining. <laughs> yes, yes. Very good. All right. Well, All that right, closes guys. out this segment. Uh, stay tuned. We're going to talk about our Stogies of the Week coming up next. <laughs> 